Look, I said, even if you wanted to, you can't just give someone a kid. You gotta have the papers and stuff. Even a car has papers to prove you didn't steal it. This baby's got no papers. There isn't nobody that knows it's alive or cares. Nobody that matters, like the police or nothing like that. This baby was born in, uh, in Plymouth. In a Plymouth. Well, it didn't happen this morning, I said. Plymouth or North Plymouth, this child has been around long enough for somebody to notice. I had a foggy understanding that I wasn't arguing the right point. This is getting us nowhere. She put her hands around the child's shoulder. Might be. Under all that blanket and pushed it gent gently back into the seat, trying to make it belong there. She looked at it for a long while. Then she closed the door and walked away. As I watched her, I was thinking that she wasn't really around. Without the child in the blanket, she walked away from my car, a very thin woman. I held the steering wheel and dug my fingers into my palms, believing the pain might force my brain to wake up and think what to do. While I was dry, uh, thinking, the woman got into the pickup truck, and it drove away without lights. I wondered if that was a reason, for a reason, or if it was just it didn't have headlights. Praise the Lord, I said out loud. At least my car has headlights. I thought, I could take this Indian child back into the bar and give it to Earl, or whichever of those two guys is left. Just sit on the counter with the salt and pepper and get the heck out of there. Or I can go someplace and sleep, and think of something to do in the morning. While I was deciding, the lights in the bar flickered out. The Budweiser sign blinked off, and stayed off. Another pickup truck swung around the gravel park lot and headed off towards the highway. It, it took everything I had to push out the car. Naturally, I had not found a hill to park on in Oklahoma. Beep, 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 I said. I pushed and pushed, jumped in, and popped the clutch, jumped out and pushed some more. I could see the child's big eyes watching in the dark. This isn't as dumb as you think, I said. It's easier in Kentucky. My car has no actual way of keeping track of miles, but I believe I must have been 50 or more uh, before we came to town. It was getting cold with no windows, and the poor little thing must have been freezing, but didn't make a peep. Can you talk, I said. I wonder if maybe it spoke something besides English. What am I supposed to do with you tonight, I said. What do you eat? I believe the flat places are quieter than hilly ones. The sounds of the car on the highway seem to get sucked straight out over the empty fields. There was nothing. Where well, there was nothing. Not even a silo to stop them from barreling on forever into the night. I began to think that if I opened my mouth, nothing would come out. I hummed to myself to keep some sound in my ears. At the time, I even uh, paid my bottom dollar for a radio. I would have even I would have even have listened to Oral Roberts. I talked to the poor dumbstruck child to stay awake, although with every uh, passing mile I felt less sleepy and more concerned that I was doing something extremely strange. We passed a sign that said some odd number of miles to the Pioneer Woman Museum. Great, I thought. Now we're getting somewhere. Are you a boy or a girl? I asked the child. It had a serial haircut, like pictures you see of Chinese kids. She or he said nothing. I suppose I would find out eventually. After a while, I began to wonder if perhaps it was dead. Maybe the woman had a dead child, murdered her, some such thing, and had it put in my car, and I was riding down the road beside it, talking to it. I had read a story in her senior English class about a woman who slept with her dead husband for 40 years. It was basically the same idea as the guy and the woman in Psycho, except that Norman Bates in Psycho was a taxidermist and knew how to preserve his mother so uh, she wouldn't totally rot out. Indians sometimes knew how to preserve the dead. I had read about Indian mummies out west. People found them in caves. I told myself to calm down. I remembered that the baby's eyes had been open when she put it down on the seat. Then again, so what if these eyes were open? Had it blinked? What, are the, what, are, what was the penalty for carrying a dead Indian child across state lines? After a while, I smelled the wet wool. Merciful heavens, I said, I guess you're still hanging in there. My dad, my plan, 
had been to sleep in the car, but naturally my plans had not taken it, uh, into account a wet, cold child. We're really in trouble now, you know You know what? I said. The next phone booth we came to. We come to? I'm going to have to call 1-800-THE-LORD. The next phone booth uh, we did come to, as a matter of fact, was outside the Mustang Hotel. I drove by slowly and checked out the place, but the guy in the office didn't look too promising. There were four or five motels pretty much in a row, their little glass uh, fronted sh uh, offices shining out over the highway like TV screens. Some of the offices were empty. In the Broken Arrow Motor Lodge, there is a gray-haired woman. Bingo. I parked under the neon sign of a pink arrow breaking and unbreaking over and over and went into the office. Hi, said the lady. Nice evening. Kind of chilly, though. She was older than she had looked from outside. Her hands shook when she uh, lifted them off the counter, and her head shook all the time, just slightly, like she was trying to single no to somebody behind my back on the slide. But she wasn't. It was just age. She smiled. Winter's on its way, she said. Yes, ma'am, it is. You been on the road long? Way too long, I said. This place is real nice. It's sight for sore eyes. Do you own this place? My son owns it, he sa she said, their head shaking. I'm over here nights. So it's kind of a family thing? Kind of. My daughter-in-law and me, we do most of the cleaning up and all. And my son does the business end of it. He works in the meatpacking plant over at Ponca City. This here's kind of a sideline thing. You reckon it's going to fill up tonight? She laughed. Law, honey, I don't think this place has been filled up since President Truman. <laughs> she slowly turned the page of the big chicken, chicken book. President Truman stayed here? She looked up at me, her eyes swimming through her thick glasses like enormous tadpoles. I know, honey, I don't think so. I remember a thing like that. You seem like a very kind person, I said. So, I'm not going to be around the bush. I got a big problem. I can't really afford to pay for room in... I wouldn't even bother you, except I got a child out in that car that's wet and cold and looking to catch pneumonia if I don't get into a bed someplace warm. She looked out toward the car and shook her head, but, but of course, I couldn't tell what that meant. She said, well, honey, I don't know. I'll take anything you got, and I'll clean it up after myself, and tomorrow morning I'll change every bed in this place, or anything else you want me to do. It's just for one night. Well, she said, I don't know. Let me get, let me go get the baby, I said. You won't mind if I just bring in the, the poor kid in here just to warm up while you decide. The most amazing thing was the way that child held on. From the first moment I picked it up out of its nest of wet blanket, it attached itself to me by its wet little hands like roots sucking on dried dirt. I think it would have been easier to separate me from my hair. It's, pro it's probably a good thing. I was so tired, and of course I, did, I was not in the habit anyway of remembering every minute where I had put down the child. And I think if it had not been stuck to me, I might have lost it while I was messing with the car and moving stuff into the little end room of the broken arrow. As it was, I just ended up carrying it back and forth a lot. It's like the specimens back in the hospital. I told myself, you just have to keep track. I looked like carrying blood and pee was to be my lot in life. Once we moved in, I spread the blanket over the chair to dry and ran a few inches of warm water in the tub. For your first order of business, I said, is to get you a bath. We'll work out the rest tomorrow. I remember the time I found a puppy and wanted to keep it. But first mama made me spend 35 cents a word to run an ad in the paper. What if it was yours? She had said. Think how bad you'd want it back. The ad I wrote said, Found puppy, brown spots, near Floyd's Mill Road. I had resented how Floyd's Mill Road was three whole words. A dollar and 35 cents. I thought to myself, I pay a hundred and five. To get this one back to its rightful owner. But that what kind of ad would you run to find out if anybody had lost an Indian child? 
All the baby clothes were way too big, with sleeves rolled up and shirts, tails wrapped around, and everything wet as mud boots, and it's hard to get off. There were a bruise twice the size of my thumb on its inner arm. I threw the soggy shirt in the sink to soak. The child's hands constantly caught my fingers and wouldn't let go. You little bugger ass, said, shaking my finger in the little fist. You're like a mud turtle. If a mud turtle bites you, it won't let go until it thunders. I hadn't any sooner gotten the hands pried loose from my fingers before they grabbed onto my shirt, sleeves, and my hair. When I pulled off the pants and the diaper, there were more bruises. Bruises and worse. The Indian child was a girl. A girl, poor thing. The fact had already burdened her short life with a kind of misery I could not imagine. I thought I knew about every ugly, every ugly thing that a person does to one another. But I had never seen, or never even thought, about such things being done to a baby girl. She sat quietly in the bathtub watching me, and I just prayed she had enough backbone not to fall over and drown, because I had to let her go. I doubled up on the floor at the base of the toilet and tried not to throw up. The floor was linoleum in a pattern that looked like rubber bricks set in a mortar. Nothing. Not Newt Hardbine or anything else I had ever seen made me feel like this. The kid was splashing like a toad frog. Her fingers were rig wiggling and slapping at the surface of the water, no doubt trying to grab a hold of something. Here, I said, and handed her a washcloth that had broken arrow rented on the, s the salvage, an indelible magic marker. She hugged that washcloth and smiled. I swear to God. After I washed... And dried her, I put her to bed in a t-shirt, the one of Mama's people had brought me one summer from Kentucky Lake. It was tight on me, and said, dang, I'm good. I'm, I'm skinny and flat-chested like a model, and I always look great in a t-shirt, if I say so myself. It was turquoise with red, and let, with red leathers, and came down past the baby's knees. These are good colors, I said, trying to pull it over her uh, sleepy, bobbing head. Indian colors. Finally, her hands were empty and her legs. She was asleep. I took out the stamps I had brought home from wrap uh, in wax paper and licked one and stuck it on my souvenir postcard from the Cherokee Nation. I added a line at the bottom. I found my hedge rents, Mama. They're coming with me.